Mississippi tonight. Square Ring Promotions in association with Left Hook Promotions and the Beau Rivage Resort and Casino present Hook City, where tonight will determine who is the most dominant left hook puncher in professional boxing today. That in the main event of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, we have tonight an evening of championship boxing featuring four title bouts distributed live domestically and seen around the world. Inside the ring, we first present 10 rounds of boxing for the vacant NABF Lightweight Championship. Sanctioned by the Mississippi Athletic Commission, Chairman Mr. John Lewis, Board members Larry Torgerson and Eddie Payton, and Assistant Director is Patrick Turner. This championship bout also sanctioned by the North American Boxing Federation. Supervising ringside is NABF President Mr. Joe Dwyer. Be it destined to go the distance, the three judges ringside scoring this bout will be Larry Ingle, Keith Hughes, and Gary Ritter. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Randy Phillips. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on my right, but the red corner, introducing first, he wears the red, white, and blue, and weighed in at 135 pounds. His professional record, 24 wins against two defeats, with 20 victories by way of knockout from St. Paul, Minnesota. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the former world title challenger, Jason, the American boy, Lisa. And across the ring, his adversary fights out of the blue corner. He wears the white and red and weighed in tonight exactly the same at 135 pounds. His professional record stands at 21 wins against a single defeat with two draws and seven victories by way of knockout from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, the former NABA and USBA champion presenting Verquan, the show. Okay, gentlemen, we've already been overruled. And with that, we are just about set to go. Our first fight, Verquan Kimbrough and Jason Lietzow. A couple of guys that had long amateur careers. If you recognize, incidentally, the jacket that Kimbrough came into the ring with, he was telling us, here's a kid with a sense of history, same jacket that Sugar Ray Leonard wore when he fought Tommy Hearns. And he's comparing this fight so much to uh, Hearns uh, Leonard and uh, as far as styles. And yeah. And from the get-go, I'm surprised that Litzel's not using his height. Like he like he actually said he would in the announcement. He says he's going to fight tall. He's kind of coming down toward to uh, uh, Verquan's height. That right hand a little bit short. Verquan Kimbrough, just one loss. He lost to Jose Gonzalez. He was stopped by him in the fourth round back in April of 2006. But he's a guy who hasn't strayed very far from home. He's only had one fight outside... West Virginia, he's fought all his fights at Mountaineer Racetrack in West Virginia, Chester, West Virginia. He did go out to Oregon to fight his last fight and came away with an eight-round decision over Justo Sanchez. First round schedule for Ted. Seemed like Litzow was more poised and relaxed uh, versus uh, Kimbrough. Who's, I mean, looking at just the glaze in his eyes. He's looking for something. He's uh, I'm not sure. Just uh, Litzow is looking very relaxed and poised in there. Well, Litzow has, has been in there with a better caliber of opponent, I think it's fair to say, than Kimbrough. Oh, definitely. And I think that's going to be the, the, the main factor to this fight. Uh, Litzow 2005 having fight of the year. Good left uh, hook right uh, there. Oh, beautiful left hook. And, uh, and, and Kimbrough felt that. And a right hand from Litzow. Right up with a beautiful right up because it came there. And Kimbrough's, Kimbrough's hurt. I mean, Kimbrough's very, Kimbrough's shaky. He's a little wobbly still. 
Lips are once again taking his time trying to set up that punch. He's trying to set up that right hand. Either it's a straight right or that right uppercut. You see he's starting to set it up. He's being very patient. I like the way he's fighting in this first round. And Kimbrough not sure. He's just trying to find something. He's trying to find his way in there. That right hand glanced off the side of the head. Well, as far as round one, if he's finding him with that right hand already, uh, I'm, I'm afraid to see what the second and third round is going to look like. Now let's go fighting tall. You talked about that. Kimbrough doing pretty good with the jab. He's getting it in there. But he's, he's just so he's so hesitant because of that right hand. He's, he's all over the place. His leg's not looking too good. Kimbrough's legs are not looking good to me at all. Tried to throw a double jab, took a left hand on the way in, almost was dropped. His legs are not looking good at all. You see he's wobbly right there, and his balance is off. He's he's not he's not looking good at all. I thought that was about half punch, half push. Pretty dominant first round, though, for Jason Litzow. Very much so. And I believe his game plan is just set. He's setting up that right hand or that right uppercut. And I believe by a second throw round, that's going to land. That right hand is going to land. Coming down to the end of round number one and a good one for Litzow. Kimbrough really unable to solve the, the riddle of trying to get inside the long arms of Litzow. Gonna have to find something. But I think he's trying too hard. He, he's coming in there, and I don't think his game plan is really set the way he said it was set. Uh, he's coming in there, and, and he's trying to uh, fight with him when he should be moving around, maybe just maybe let, trying to draw him in a little more. Um, Kimbrough's not a big puncher, so I don't think him trying to. I don't think Kimbrough trying to get in there is gonna work. And as you see. As you see, Lissa right here says he's, he's setting up that right hand. He's setting up that right hand, and he's going to land. He's, I feel he's going to land. A little bit later in the round, chopping right hand. It was a slip, but if you look, his legs were wobbly. It wasn't just a slip that made him wobble like that. He's, he's, he's not all together yet. So round number two, and Kimbrough's going to have to solve a problem. Litzow comes out, throws a right hand lead immediately. Kimbrough doing a good job throwing like a, a, a up jab type of uh, uh, jab, and it's, it's landing pretty good, but Litzow's not, it's, it's not stopping him at all. He's still coming in. He's trying to land that right hand. He's short with it a lot. There's a lunging right hand by Kimbrough. And another and one. Goes. Right on the button. Kimbrough needs to settle down a little bit, and he's going to do good if he settles down, but he's got to settle down. That right hand caught in the gloves of Kimbrough. During, during the interview with Kimbrough, he said he's going to try and uh, throw over that, that jab and throw that right hand over the jab. I haven't seen it yet. No, I think he's getting out quick early in this fight. Oh, yeah, and then Litzow's jab is working nice to perfection almost. Yeah, Litzow just not able to get inside to get into punching range at all. Oh, nice. Double jab there. But I think that's the ticket for Kimbrough getting in there. He has to throw a double or triple jab. Stiff jab. He can't just power puff the jab. He has to throw stiff jabs to get in there if he wants to get in. If he thinks he's going to uh, box him and, and, and it's not going to work, he has to throw stiff jabs, get in there, and mix it up. Let's how when he throws a jab. It's a good snapping jab. Nice. Nice stiff jab. He's playing target practice with that right hand. Oh, nice right hand by Kimbrough. And a nice. nice one. And Litzow Litzow walks right in. Right in. Right into it. And that's what Kimbrough has to do. He has to get in there and just, hey, when he gets in there, hey, fight. <laughs> that's exactly what he's been doing. Use that double stiff jab, get in there and fight. Much better round for Kimbrough. Very much so. His confidence is getting back, but his legs are still looking wobbly to me. You see, I mean, every time he gets touched back, Look at his legs. I mean, they're very shaky. Slipped another right hand in. This off a bloody nose. And Kimbrough has cut. There's wow. a good right hand by Litzow. He's hurt. He's hurt. Let's see. Left hand and another sharp right hand. Kimbrough holding on. 
just trying to get through the round. He's got 23 seconds to wow. go. Wow. Right hand wow. dropped it. Wow. What an amazing right hand. I told you, Woodside was setting up that right hand, and it landed. And he's still on shaky wheels here. He's been shaking since round one. I'm not sure if it is. About eight seconds left in this round. They'll have some work to do. It's a pretty serious cut. But let's not being very smart. He's taking his time. He's not rushing anything. Big round for Litzow. Litzow actually was in danger of losing that round, I thought. Yeah, because uh, Kimbrough threw some good overhand rights, got in there and built some confidence, but uh, Litzow took it all the way. Now we got to see about this cut. This is a pretty nasty cut. They'll have some work to do. Yeah, no. Come on, work on outside of it. See what I'm saying? Well, I guess Kimbrough's chance right now is that cut being an issue, and then it stops within the four rounds like it was a no contest. Come on, listen to what he's telling you, man. Kimbrough started off pretty well in this round and found a hole for his right hand. So he was coming in with stiff double jabs, and he got in there throwing the right hand. There it goes, that lead right hand he got in there. And Litzau with that big right hand there. That might have been the one that well, caused he, the cut. Since round one, Litzau's been aiming that right hand, playing target practice, and he found that he found the target come second round. Knockdown coming up right here. Right hand. You saw the left hand of Kimbrough drop down to his side. Litzau took advantage. Round three. Litzau taking his time, setting things up. He's... he's his game right now. He's, he's more the game fighter right now. He's taking his time. Blood continuing to come from the right eye and of that, Raquan Kimbrough. And that must be affecting him a lot because I'm, I'm not sure if he's been cut before, but uh, it must be affecting him. Cuts on the, it appears to be on the side of the eye, so not a big danger of blood getting into that eye right now. But it did seem to bother him at the end of that last round. And Kimbrough's leg still looking shaky to me. I mean, this house is playing target practice. Double jab there by Kimbrough. That's what he needs to do. If he, if he wants to win, he's got to just move around and not get hit like that. Yeah, double right hand. Now he's in trouble. I think, I think the fight's going to get stopped right here. And he drops him. That will be a knockdown. Three, four, five. What an amazing fight. <laughs> what an amazing fight. That's exactly as, as advertised. We expected it would be this way. Let's out. Very impressive, actually. It's a little lazy with his left hand. And you saw Kimbrough almost made him pay that time. This right hand. This is what boxing is about. Two 50-50 guys getting in there, and they're both trying to take a step up. Kimbrough is in big trouble. He's not yet back. And he's got a long way to go in this round. Right hand. I, I really don't understand why he's trying to fight with this guy. He's been hurt. He's, he's hurt again. And he's in some serious trouble. Takes a right hand, a left hand, left to the body, a right to the head. Let's and out. another right. He's dropping his hand. Why, I don't know. And down he goes. And that's it. Fight's over. Impressive win wow. for Jason Litzow. Well, I thought he stopped it. The wow. referee wow. shaked the, the fight off. Or are you I, saying there was no knockdown? No, yeah, no knockdown. I apologize. I thought the referee was waving the fight off. Looked like, looked like it was. It's going to be over pretty soon the way it's looking right now. Well, he's still wobbly. You can see he's got no legs left. Still got 38 seconds. There is no three knockdown rule. He, he, but he needs to get on his bicycle and just, hey, just ride. <laughs> just dance around the ring, get his legs together, and stop getting hit with that right hand. He needs a big right hand. Triple four left wow. hands. Wow. Five, it's time to stop this fight right now. He needs to go to his right. He's to, to avoid that right hand. He's taking a bad beating. And they're going to say no knockdown there either. He needs to start going to his right to avoid that right hand of Litzel. And, and get his right hand affected. He's but gonna, he's not. He's going to get through this round. He still has no legs. <laughs> I have no idea why he's just taking, wow. sitting on the rope like that. Wow. Big beating. Big beating in that round. I actually made that a 10-7 round. 
the only thing he's got left is a desperation right hand. That's all he's got. Take this towel, man. I ain't going to let you get hurt. Now, you'll show me something the first 30 seconds. And the doctor is going to come in, take a look. This fight would be well stopped. And it's a the corner over. stops it. Referee should have stopped it. That was a smart move by the corner. His legs are shot. He was done. From round one, his legs seemed like there was a problem. I'm not... I'd love to find out what it was, but it's not very emotional in there right now. Well, he should be. I thought he yeah. did a great job. He took control of the fight right at the get-go. A little bit of a rally by Kimbrough in the second round, and then from that point on, it was all Litzow. Jason Litzow, the American boy, the new NABF lightweight champion. That was an impressive performance by him. Very sharp. He was very patient. Very much so. Came in there, took his time, and he had a game plan. He had a, a definite game plan, a definiteness of purpose. <laughs> Well, for Kimbrough, there'll be another day. I think Kimbrough, quite honestly, overmatched today. Well, what, what, like you said earlier, all his fights were in West Virginia. He only had one fight outside of West Virginia, so he was he, he was uh, tailored uh, and watched very closely. And, and Blitzow, on the other hand, was in there with Robert Guerrero, of course. Guerrero did stop him, but there was a headbutt, a serious cut in the first round might have affected that fight. But, you know, you're fighting a guy like Robert Guerrero. You're in there with some pretty very tough guys. So. Let's start just now playing respect to the, the, the greats of the game who just uh, recently uh, passed away last month. So an impressive win. Let's go to Mike Williams and get the official result. Ladies and gentlemen, officially the end comes after three rounds of action by Dr. Stoppage. He is the winner. And now the NABF lightweight champion, Jason, the American boy, Lisa. Well, let's kind of take a look back here as Litzow came into the ring very confident. He's very confident when he talked to him yesterday and he fought like a confident fighter. Very much so. And he, he had a game plan. He had a strategy, laying that right hand, and he mixed it up very well through great combinations. There you see him throwing just left after left, but that right hand is what did the job for him. Yeah, it was a, I thought the fight actually should have been stopped midway through that last round. I thought it was stopped, as a matter of fact, midway through that last round, but it was all Jason Litzow, and he is a winner, deservedly so, and he wears a belt for the first time. It is an NABF belt, but nonetheless, it's a belt. Let's get uh, a word with the winner now as we go to Rob Brown. Rob? Jason, congratulations on the belt. How's it feel to have it wrapped on, man? Well, first of all, I owe this all to a trail guy, Brandon Forrest, and my cousin Johnny Drury, who died today. It's for them, and I love Haley, Morgan, Olivia, and Lisa, I love you, and my whole family and friends back home. Obviously a very emotional win. You came into this and there was a lot of power behind that punch early on. It looked like you were really setting to bring that straight right, working the jab a lot. What was the game plan coming into this fight? Uh, I bring all my emotions because you never know when it's your last day in America. And I love America, so I bring all my emotions to the fight because I could be dead tonight and I'm here. So, but the right hand, yeah, I was bringing power. Like I always do to please all these fans out here. They don't want to see no distance. They want to see hurt. Jason, we're going to take a quick look at the end of round three here, which, of course, showed a lot of power behind that punch. You had him on the ropes over here in the corner a number of times. What's going through your mind? Walk us through this. Uh, I, I just, you know, I fought at 126, and I can make 126 easy. So I didn't know how I'd do at 35, but I felt stronger. Like, when he hit me, I could take a punch like, like I couldn't at 26. I can take it a, a lot better at 35 because there's water around my back. But I'm going for the knockout for the fans. And as anybody knows that I fight, I don't give a damn if I get knocked out or knock somebody the hell out. That's what I do. Jason, let's out your champion. Congratulations on the belt, Jason. Well, an emotional uh, Jason Litzow comes away a winner, walks away with an NABF belt, and he very likely will uh, get an opportunity at a